Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week starting the 7th of uh, May. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. So let's get into the, uh, the week ahead and on trading economics, zooming in. And for the week ahead, 8th of May, uh, which will be the Monday, uh, the upcoming week in the US will be dominated by news related to prices, including the inflation rate, producer prices and export and import prices, as well as Michigan consumer centered and sent, um, sorry, consumer confidence CPI gauge. Additionally, CPI figures are scheduled to be released in China. Um, and uh, that's pretty much all we really want to look at. Um, in the UK, the Q1 GDP growth data will be released and investors will be closely monitoring the Bank of England's interest rate decision. So elsewhere, China is set to publish external trade data and Australia will import, uh, sorry, will report on consumer and business uh, confidence. So um, slightly, I wouldn't say necessarily quiet because, uh, you know, the US is definitely going to be keenly watched and there is the Bank of England. But when it comes to, I think, the rest of the world, Europe, uh, Australia, Canada, nothing really of note to uh, to really kind of watch out for this week. So let's get into some of the technicals as well as um, some of the uh, fundamental side of things and didn't have the right chart on. Here we go. Let's just uh, get rid of all that. Right. So um, looking at the US dollar index and the US dollar index is just a measure of strength against, uh, you know, uh, various currencies like the euro, the yen and the pound. Right. And so for me, my bias is really determined by um, the fundamental side of things. And fundamentally, we did have actually some decent numbers on Friday. So job strength, still high inflation cast out on Fed uh, on bets Fed will cut rates and uh, US payroll rise 253,000 crushing estimates uh, jobless rate falls to 3.4 percent hovering near historic lows and data defy Fed's rate hiking campaign temper recession fears and two-year treasury will spike uh, stock futures rise and um, and so the data behind um, I guess the job strength and the reason why the job strength was um uh, was seen as a potential positive from the headline perspective was because um the us is expected to go into a recession at some point um some analysts are saying by the end of the year and some are saying next year but as if if the us you sorry the us economy keeps um uh, providing jobs and jobs uh, um, employment is is rising and rising at a you know a rapid pace or at least on the surface um then it kind of pushes the idea of a recession coming sooner um, into the long grass, pretty much. And so um, that um, on the surface seems actually quite positive, as well as un unemployment going down, right? So the jobless rate fell as well to 3.4, hovering near historic lows. And so employment is up, um, unemployment is down, which would be um on the surface to a lot of um i guess uh, traders um uh, you know who do follow just numbers would be quite positive but why is uh bond traders or why are bond traders bets uh, uh on biggest shift in fed uh in decades on credit risks right because there are some other things that are going on behind the scenes that although the jobs numbers look really good in fact, they could actually start to become negative based off of uh, the recent banking crisis and a potential credit crunch, right? And so uh, the, the 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 market is a lot more forward thinking that you then then you know then most traders kind of anticipate. They look you know three, six, nine, twelve months into the future and try to, especially bond traders, they have to be right. So um, and try to forecast what is likely to happen. So. Um, frenzied wages on the July rate cut followed this week's hike and uh, gauges that have been safely ignored for years get attention. So let's uh, read uh, into this. So fresh fears over recession-inducing credit crunch are spurring bond bulls to ramp up bets that the Federal Reserve will embark on the most abrupt policy shift in almost four decades. So you wouldn't necessarily get that from the numbers, right? You wouldn't get that from here, but... 
Um, again, there are risk events that are taking place, like, for example, as we were talking about the credit crunch, right? Just uh, minutes after Wednesday's Federal Reserve interest rate hike, traders intensified their long-standing wages on imminent cuts as renewed turmoil in regional banks sent shivers across Wall Street at their most anxious markets priced in a policy about phase as soon as July. I don't know whether that's going to happen in July, but um, that would be uh, uh, crazy if it did. I think it would be unprecedented, but... In terms of the currency uh, interest cycle, they say that the shortest time that uh, central banks would have fed anyway have gone from hiking to cutting is about six months. So we know we're already in May. So to have rate cuts in July is just um, is uh, yeah, is a bit of a crazy one. So U.S. unemployment data released Friday tempered that view, right? And next week's inflation reports are expected to show scant progress towards the Fed's 2% target. Yet, key barometers of economic health, which traders have largely ignored for years, are cause for concern. The Fed's uh, quarterly senior loan officers survey is one. <coughs> Excuse me. Others include a gauge of small business sentiment. <coughs> Apologies and... Uh, use of central bank emergency facilities. So while headline data suggests the US uh, business cycle is proving more resilient uh, than expected, keep <coughs> keeping inflation hot and pressuring bond yields to financial outlook may be darkening. Sorry, I'm um, uh, trying to hold this coffee in my throat and I'm uh, my eyes are watering. Um, anyways, so, uh, so yeah, so that's basically what's uh, what's happening um, with the US, right? So the headline data is is saying is saying yeah, yeah, excellent dollar, but the um, underlying uh, future prospects of the dollar uh, credit crunch um, is saying something else, right? And we'll read this as well, uh, which says if credit tightening trend continues, it's going to be difficult to sustain strong economic growth. Yeah. Eventually, lower rates are going to be needed, said Kathy Jones, fixed income strategist at Charles Schwab and Co. So how soon is the question? A rate cut just two months after a hike would be the first time since October 1987 when uh, then Chief Fed Alan Greenstat Greenspan slashed borrowing costs in the aftermath of Black Monday. So again, there was a trigger there, right? in terms of, um, it wasn't just a case of, you know, they had to kind of cut, it was the cut was induced due to a risk event. So um, that could, um, you know, happen, uh, you know, now. So again, depending on how bad things get. So for me, um, you know, looking to, am I looking to buy the dollar with all these fears going on? Ooh, not, not really. Um, and also as well, this was from um, a research paper where the US banks are suffering more uh, than in the UK or Europe, right? So you've had uh, the um, uh, the US are not doing too well in terms of um, in terms of the, their their banks. So um, there's that going on in the background, and so um, where for me anyway, my bias is still to the downside. So if, I, if you do, or if I do get any pullbacks into these areas here, into these zones. I had marked out from last week. I think for me, it gives confluence uh, to try and get short on any of the dollar crosses, not necessarily trying to short the uh, the, the dollar index. But um, I think these areas here within that supply zone are going to be decent uh, shorting um, opportunities and with, with confluence. And so, um, yeah, the dollar yen, moving on to the dollar yen. And um, again, I think for me, my bias is to the... Uh, to the um to the downside and i put here fed one more hike expected in fact i think uh it's one it's no more i think they're holding now right so they're holding and inflation will really be the the, the key test um whether the fed will continue to hike or not um if if inflation stays sticky then there could be you know some um some fears that the Fed may, you know, have to hike one more time. But um, with the, you know, again, as we just gone over the uh, credit um, uh, crisis, the looming banking uh, credit crisis uh, could put an end to that anyways. And so with the Japanese yen, they are looking to actually potentially uh, 
strengthen their currency and appreciate their currency with the removal of yield curve control. Um, and also as well in the risk off environment, the yen should historically um, you know, appreciate in a risk off environment as a safe haven currency. So for me, I think um, any pullbacks into these zones are going to be uh, buying opportunities for the yen, right? So that's where uh, my, my bias is. Obviously last week there was an opportunity uh, to do that and prices did you know go to the downside but I think if prices pull back and even just a bit higher around that to that 138 area I think that's going to be a really nice uh, zone to look for some uh, some shorts I'm not looking to buy the um, the dollar at any uh, moment at them uh, currently so then we've got a demand zone there as well just updating this chart from last week and so yeah prices have bounced off that demand zone but I think the path of these resistance is to the downside um dollar swiss again i think i'd have to just update these should have done this before uh, i recorded the video but uh one more uh hike expected for the swiss national bank and a hold from the fed now um there was some inflation data that came out where for the swiss franc and the um swiss inflation actually had come out uh, lower than expected it had dropped and so you might actually see price start to come up again it has come up to these areas but even higher to maybe the 90 50 areas um before dropping again based off of risk off sentiment so um i do think that i think the underside of this area if you do want to get short on this currency pair and buy the swiss franc is a, a decent um area to look for any kind of short trades i think from a long trade perspective we still haven't really seen um any strong demand at the moment so uh right now i think um i wouldn't necessarily want to be a buyer of the dollar anyways but if you did zooming out i don't know whether you would really want to look towards i guess a daily zone that kind of happened back in 2021 um not really a fan of trading these types of uh these zones unless there's a proof of value, meaning that it would really have to kind of bounce off of that level and, and uh, prove that there's demand there for me to want to get involved in that. But again, fundamentally, I'm not looking to buy the dollar. So um, that's where really where I stand with that. Uh, dollar uh, CAD and the Canadian dollar actually had some really good news on Friday in terms of uh, jobs as well. And so... Um, that's the reason why you saw, you know, you're seeing the Canadian dollar strengthen, but they are actually still um, looking to uh, hold rates. There have been some uh, rumblings of them looking to potentially hike rates uh, at some point, but um, uh, I don't know whether that would actually uh, whether that come to fruition. But as long as the rumor is there, because ultimately it's by the rumor, sell the fact. If the rumor starts to circulate and starts to get some traction, then that could be actually one of the main reasons why you're seeing the Canadian dollar uh, start to uh, uh, strengthen. But again, this is a this is a pair where um, I wouldn't necessarily want to be a buyer of the uh, the dollar uh, at all. And not really a buyer of the Canadian dollar, but technically there are some decent levels in and around here. And also as well, you've got uh, I think some demand here and some demand down at these lows. Uh, this is now created actually uh, some supply in this area. So maybe a pullback into this zone right here if you wanted to be a buyer of the um, of the Canadian dollar. You would really start to look for a pullback into this zone here before looking at getting uh, short. But either way, not not looking to trade that fundamentally. Uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Um, I was talking about this last week. Prices just didn't, or the week before, prices just didn't come down into this zone. But now we're proving that there's actually some decent uh, demand in these areas. And so this now becomes a... Uh, demand zone right here and demand here the um rbnz the uh, new zealand central bank are actually expected to uh continue to hike rates i think one more time so with the fed looking to actually pause and the um new, uh, new zealand bank uh, rbnz are looking to hike rates you could actually start to see um, again, a pullback into, you know, any of these zones 
forward looking at getting um, long. And with China as well, hopefully um, growing as well, although they've kind of had a bit of a um, recent data that didn't come out too positive, um, that could also support the New Zealand dollar in terms of a New Zealand dollar buy. So any pullbacks into this area here, the uh, 0 0.618, I think, is uh, technically is a decent uh, buy. Start to look for buys, but um, I think the overall bargain level would be around these 0 0.607 areas. Uh, moving towards the pound dollar, and the pound dollar um, has just gone from strength to strength. Um, again, had a, a, a long bias on this, and um, you know, we do have a supply zone from way back in May 2022, and the next supply zone, if you are looking to get short. Is going to be all the way from uh, April 2022. So, all this area looks like supply as well. But my bias is to the upside on this pair, waiting for really a, a decent pullback. I think into the 124s should be nice, and even better would be the 123.60s. But um, the pound at the moment. Uh, let's go to here. The UK uh, economists see one more hike, uh, rate hike from Bank of England. And so Bloomberg survey shows peak at 4.5% less than markets expected. Quantitative tightening expected to continue at current pace. And also as well, um, yeah, so the economists are thinking that um, the, the, the rate is going to Basically, the Bank of England are going to do a one and done. So, uh, but the market is actually expecting a, a lot more rate hikes, you know, 4.75 to 5%. And so, um, interesting to see basically who's going to be right, whether the economists or the, uh, or the market is right. And so, with high inflation, and inflation doesn't start to come back down to at least single digits, then you know, probably likely you will get more hikes as well. And as long as the economy can support the um, the rate uh, the rate hikes as well. So for now, with the, um, again, the Federal Reserve looking to pause rates and the Bank of England looking to, you know, continue to hike rates um, at the moment, I think any pullbacks are going to be nice buying opportunities um, when it comes to the uh, pound dollar. In fact, we've reached the one, two, sixes now. Uh, there's projections for the um, for the pound dollar to actually reach one thirties, and so um, that's going to be interesting. So waiting for a pullback for me um, to look for a uh, a buying opportunity to get long on this um, on this currency pair. Uh, moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar um, again interesting. This week you had um, the Fed and the ECB. Um, you know, release their statements and ECB officials get behind Lagarde's pledge of more rate hikes. So policymakers delivered quarter point uh, increase on Thursday. Lagarde has flagged at least two more moves in the pipeline. So again, while one central bank is, um, I say one, but the Federal Reserve are looking to pause, obviously, and the ECB are continuing to, uh, you know, uh, hike rates. So I think any... Um, pullbacks on this uh, currency pair into certain zones are going to be uh, nice. And um, yeah, it doesn't look great technically. Technically, it doesn't look nice. But when you get, you know, uh, quite wide zones of demand, the best thing to do is to actually just go down into a lower time frame and see if you can get a bit more detail. So for me, if I'm looking at, you know, levels, I would probably look towards this area here. It's like a decent area of support and resistance within um, that daily demand zone. This is just one of the ways that you can, uh, you know, add a bit more confluence. And so, yeah, I think coming down to this, maybe the 109s, I think is going to be nice. And you can see where the 108s, yeah, 108 round number is going to be decent as well. So first area, I think you've got a decent level of zoom out a little bit yeah you can see that this zone as well has been used the 10835 has been used as support and resistance in the past as well so within those zones i think these are the pretty the three areas that i would look towards taking um some sort of a uh, long trade 
ignoring pretty much any, everything else. And so, yeah, uh, the path of these resistance actually is to the upside. The future projections and forecasts are again, um, I say again, but they're up to the 115s. And so uh, we could see if uh, by the end of the year. And so there's still a lot, about 500 pips to the upside, um, if all um, the fundamentals actually uh, play out as expected, right? Because things do change and um, no one's got a crystal ball. But if they do play out, then um, I think any, you know, buy trading in the rounding zones are going to be decent for a long trade. Uh, the Australian dollar, US dollar, going back to the uh, the daily time frame chart, um, I do think that the Australian dollar is a buy, uh, at least for the short term. Reason being is because um, this week there was a surprise hike from the RBA. Uh, Australia signals further tightening after unexpected rate hikes. So Lowe says board reached strong consensus on today's increase. RBA deadly serious about bringing down inflation, Lowe says. So in order to bring down inflation, you've got to basically keep hiking, right? So it's going to be important to watch what inflation does in, in Australia because ultimately that will determine whether the... Um, the amount of hikes um, that the RBA will do. So uh, with that being said, I think any pullbacks, so any pullbacks into a any demand zones, pull back into here, and even get even a, a, even a lower area, the 65 is going to be really nice. Also as well, what the Australian dollar has going for it is um, – the uh, China reopening as well, which should support the Australian dollar, providing China's reopening goes well. Yeah, so um, I think the Australian dollar is a buy as the Fed, you know, actually hold, right? And in fact, the RBA are looking to hike, and it is data dependent. That is data dependent as well. Also as well, just going back to the... Um, uh, to the euro dollar and just do um, hold as well and two three more hikes I think two hikes are probably expected on the euro as well so here we are so for me this is one of the pairs that I've added to my uh, to my list as well of uh, of biases that I will try to look for long trades on and finally gold and gold um Again, we're at, you know, for context, we are at, um, at highs. Did break, I think, the all-time high, the 280s, 274s, yeah, 2074s. And so, um, for me, gold is still a buy, waiting for a decent pullback. Also, as well, you have a um, lot of confluence with gold, not only with uh, the dollar decline expected, you know, in 2023 towards the second half, but... In April, you had China expands gold reserves at central banks for the fifth month. So holdings of People's Bank rise to more than 200, sorry, 2,000 tons. And precious metal hits the highest in more than a year this week. And that was in April. And now, a month later, we have China's gold splurge reaches sixth month as reserves rise again. So China added to its gold reserves for a sixth month, extending a flurry of purchases as central banks around the world expand their holdings of bullion amid escalating geopolitical and economic risks, right? Economic risks. And so it's not just China, it's central banks around the globe. And so with the risks, uh, you know, they may or may not materialize, right? But you've got to prepare for the worst. And so um, in preparation, central banks are not looking to just buy today and then sell tomorrow. They're going to buy today and hold, right? For, for a long time until they think the coast is clear. And so, um, yeah, I think any price pullbacks, especially to this 1942 area, I think is going to be a decent area to buy Um Gold, again, not financial advice, I'm telling you to buy anything, um, but this is what I'm looking to uh, to do. So, um, yeah, if you do want to look to sell gold, of course, you know, there could be some profit taking up here. Uh, that makes all the sense in the world. If you've, you know, bought down here or bought around here, then why not take profit at, at levels, you know, that are highs, right? Plus as well, um, you know, is there a lot of liquidity here in terms of our traders really, who are, who's buying here, right, in terms of, you know, and who's selling here. So um, 
you know, if there's not enough um, sell orders to facilitate buying, yeah, then the market has to look for liquidity underneath the market, right? So if, if, if I'm a trader and I'm buying here, then my stop loss is clearly a sell order. So there's also liquidity below the market as, you know, the liquidity gets built up behind uh, swings. And so um, it makes sense for prices to pull back a little bit, a little bit of profit taking. But um, if we can get a deeper pullback, I think that's going to represent decent value. Because if the central banks are buying, then, um, you know, who am I to uh, go against that? Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. Um, yes. Was there anything else? OK, yeah, I'll show you the um, my fundamental analysis spreadsheet and the pairs. I guess I'm interested in this is typically reserved for um, the guys that are in the uh, uh, mentoring group. But just thought I'd just share this anyway. So um, on a uh, on a weekly basis, I actually it's more and more on a um, bi uh, say bi weekly. I say uh, twice a week. Where we pretty I pretty much put out videos. Um, we have a group call on a Wednesday, a live group call, Zoom call, and I go over this and my fundamental bias, and then I do a weekend private mentoring video for the guys in there, which goes into a lot more detail, a lot more fundamentals. Um, what you're getting on YouTube is actually, um, you know, quite the, the the basic stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so um, yeah, this is basically what I showed the the guys as well as, and this is from our economic data tab. Um, the uh, um, uh, which basically shows um, our, you know, base currency, close current, current currency rankings. And um, my bias is basically going to be here on each of the pairs. And I explain exactly why. So got long, short and watch list and neutral meaning. I'm not looking to take those trades. So um, you can have a quick look, obviously, and uh, see what I'm long and short on. Again, it's not financial advice, but just to let you, you know, see that we actually do... Um, have biases on other pairs that we do we trade other pairs that we uh, present in this uh, youtube video so anyways guys um take care have a great trading week uh, monday is a bank holiday in the uk so it's likely to be a bit subdued of course um we never know with the market with light um liquidity uh, there could actually be a bit more volatile but the main trading starts probably back on Tuesday. And so, uh, yeah, just be careful out there if you're trading on the Monday, because there might be some moves um, due to like liquidity and a lot more liquidity hunting. So um, yeah, let's see what happens. But anyways, guys, have a great trading week. Enjoy your bank holiday here in the UK. And I'll speak to you all next week or until the next video.